Hey, it's Rich, the Louisiana Hobby Guy. Are you at the point where you've mastered your diode laser? Are you ready to maybe step up to something better? Well, stick around because today we're going to talk about the entry-level CO2 laser. Coming right up. Okay, so surprise, surprise, um, for all you CO2 lovers, we now have a K40 in the shop, along with the bigger 50 watt ohm tech. Now the K40 is an eight by 12, and really you can go nine by 12. This is one of the uh, cheapest lasers on the market that you can buy today. This particular laser uh, costs under $500 delivered, and that's with you buying a bucket from Lowe's or Home Depot or wherever uh, for your water supply. So this one is a Monport and I have entered into an agreement with them to have what the Chinese call an open room, uh, which this shop has always been since I moved in here an open room if anybody wants to come visit. And I will be demonstrating their products for them. So this is one. I have a fiber laser that's on the way. That'll be another one. And just to run through it real quick, if you've never seen one before or if you're thinking about upgrading from a diode, uh, it's a very basic control panel. Over here you've got your power up 10%, power down 10%. You've got power up 1% and down 1%, up and down 0.1%. This over here is the laser power display. If I turn this on, you'll see that right now there is, it's set for 10% power. So I could press that button and make it 20. I could make it 21, 22. And uh, this comes with some standard Chinese software that uh, I don't particularly like. I used to have a K40. I didn't use the Chinese software. Uh, I, I picked up free uh, K40 Whisperer and that works really well. Now up on the top you've got two temperature gauges. The one up on the top is the temperature inside the machine, the power supply. The one over here is the temperature in the water reserve which is your cooling. This opens up. Everything is very clean and tidy which I really like from this company uh, as compared to uh, the last one that I had, and I don't remember what the brand was on that one, but it was, uh, you know, about the same price, but a much, a really horrible build. Um, this one here, I've gone through all of the wiring. I've, I've made sure everything was tight. Everything is hot glued. If you take a look here, even though these snap in, these are snap in connectors, you can see on the side. They've gone ahead and hot glued everything. Um, it has the M2 Nano motherboard. Everything's hot glued down there, which I won't be keeping. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna change out that board for a smoothieware and put in my own custom software. So um, yeah, I'm not gonna keep that. That's what I did on my last one. I bought a basic smoothieware board for about I don't know I don't remember how much it was, but it was cheap and uh, I changed out, I put my own software in it. Over here is the actual laser bit. We'll open this up and take a look. You can hear the fan running in the background. I don't think you can see it. It's down in there somewhere. <laughs> it's inside, in the back of that. So it's way in the back there. I'll close this door real quick. So this is the work bed area. It's 9 by 12. It's a standard K40. Uh, I'll be doing a bunch of modifications to it. Uh, one of the first things I'll be doing is taking out this bed and putting in my old, uh, my old K40. Well, I think I already have it in here, as a matter of fact. Take a quick look. Let's see. 
And th this th doesn't just pull right out. I, I have it uh, detached right now because I'm going to be starting the modifications. So I can't do this with two hands. <laughs> it's kind of weird the way this goes in. There we go. So let's see, it's got two lips on it, not one. So it's kind of hard to take out. But that comes out. Uh, this comes out. This is if you needed to do something larger. And there you can see is my, my, uh, my adjustable bed. So the reason that I have that is because I'm going to take this whole thing out. I'm not just going to, and don't worry, moving this by hand does not send power, you know, backwards on this stepper motor. It's this DC power, so I don't know what people are talking about when they make these crazy statements online. But I'm going to be taking all of this out to get this out of the way. All of these pieces are unnecessary. And this is my jack, my scissor jack. Now I have an, another scissor jack. I bought this one specifically for this unit. But my old one, the knob over here, I have a really long knob. It's about that long. That long, about, a, about eight inches long. And what I did was I took this post out. I take all the posts out. And in the front here, I made a hole down here and then a notch that came all the way up about three, three and a half inches. So that as you turn this, you can turn it from the outside and the whole bed ra raises up because the K40s have a stationary uh, Z. So this is stationary right here. So that this, I actually epoxy on my other one down to the bed. I, I took the feet off and I epoxied it to the bottom and it gives me a, a, a really good uh, Z height. Uh, over here on the side is the rails. This is just the stop. There's no limit switch in the front, just has an end stop. And you can see that all of the adjustments that were made at the factory were hot glue. So I kind of like that because uh, when I got it, I did my focal test and uh, the focal test was perfect. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do a, an actual first burn. I have not done a burn yet. The only thing I've done is uh, I've just pulsed it and checked my mirrors. And everything was just perfectly aligned straight from the factory. The only one thing that is not aligned is this little mirror holder right here, which is not a big deal. <laughs> I'll just push it over a little bit if that plays with your OCD. I've already cleaned off the, the linear, linear rail. And uh, I've applied some real grease to it. Um, the grease that it comes with is, is absolutely not worth it. So I have this for, for the 50 watt. And uh, this is something that you do about once a month. You, you grease that linear rail. And so uh, let's, let's go ahead and uh, do the first burn and see what she does. I haven't found out yet. We're about to find out right now. All right, so here's something that you won't normally see on my channel. It's a new software program, and don't worry. <laughs> I'm going back to Lightburn. I do have a Smoothieware board that I ordered that's coming on the way. I'm going to put my own custom software on it so that I can run Lightburn with this machine. But this is the first run, so we're, we're going to uh, test it and see how it works. This is K40 Whisper. It's a free software program. You, you don't want to use the software that comes with the Chinese lasers. You want to use this K40 Whisperer. It's free, uh, open source, works really well, and uh, prevents you from having to use the uh, hardware key that uh, comes with the K40 lasers. Now, without that hardware key, which takes up a USB port, by the way, because you have to have that plugged in in order to use you know, the, the K40 with factory software. So if you only have one, one USB port on your computer or two, you know, and you're using one already, uh, you might be using both of them. Uh, you're out of luck. So this is a good program because you don't need that key. So uh, let's go ahead and initialize the laser. Down here on the bottom, you'll find out 
whether or not it initializes, I'm guessing that it will. And you can hear it homing in the background. I don't know if you heard that or not. So current position is 0, 0. That's exactly where we want it. Uh, let's open a design file. And let's see, we're going to go to the network buffer because I have one in there called caution. We'll bring that out. I'm going to move this. You can hear the laser moving, which by the uh, a lot of K40 users don't know that you can move the laser head just by moving the picture. I'm going to put it like right about in the middle, right there. And I don't remember my settings from my last key, uh, K40, but I'm thinking that the raster, I already set this a minute ago, thinking that the raster was 150, the vector was 20, and the cut was 10. And I set the power on the laser to 8%. That should be good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and send this job. We'll see how it does. Oh, and one other thing down the bottom over here, this tells you how long it's going to take. So you got 29 seconds and vector engraved zero. I don't know why it says that. Let me see something here. Raster. Oh, right. Because this drawing is all offset lines. Okay. So we're just going to do uh, one pass on this, one pass on the cut, and hopefully that worked. Let me switch over to the uh, laser camera, and I'll show you how this works. We're going to test this out for the first time ourselves together. So let's, let's see how it does. All right, so there you go. It came out really pretty, pretty nice for the first run. I don't have any of the settings dialed in. I don't remember what my old settings were. Just before I did it, I decided to uh, redo. Let me get rid of this. I I decided to reduce the size uh, down to 50 millimeters. So this is a really, really small piece. Um, you know, it's uh, I, I made it as small as I could because I didn't want to, about maybe two inches or so, I think is 50 millimeters, just so that it wouldn't take too long. And I also changed the speed down here to 175 instead of 200. 
Um, I think 200 is about the max that you're going to go if you're going to run low power. And I needed to run low power because my water was at, I started at what, 22 degrees, something like that Celsius. So that was like at the upper end. And it only went from 22 to 22.3. And it fluctuated between 22.3 and 22.2. So it uh, wasn't a problem. And I'm not going to do that. You know, that, that's the high end of the temperature for the water. I don't have it hooked up to the, uh, the ice maker yet. Um, so I had to run this one slower. And with, with you know, less power, 8% power is what I ran it with. Now, one thing about uh, K40 Whisper is that there are very, very, very few controls in here. You have to import a file. That file, you see the red line here? It only sit, understands red and shades of black. Um, there's no editing in here whatsoever. You have to do all of your editing in another software program. Uh, you can do it in Lightburn, you know, as long as you use blacks. Uh, the best thing to do is to use an image with grayscale and use something like in Inkscape or any one of the photo editing programs that you have will work fine. But this is a super basic program. The only thing that it's meant to do is to send the file to the laser. It's sort of like uh, just an intermediary and it's okay. You know, I mean, it's a good little program if you have your own image software and you want to go through that extra step. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to install a, a, a Smoothieware CNC board on it, put my software on it, and use it with Lightburn. So now the question becomes, do you need to have a 17 and a half by 17 and a half inch work area? Or could you get away with an 8 by 12? That's the real question here. Because when choosing a laser today, the only reason why people are choosing diode lasers is cost. So if you wanted to get something like the like the 50 watt back here with the 12 by 24 bed, well, you're looking at spending about $2,500 plus some modifications. And that's a lot of money for a lot of people, $2,500. But in today's market, if you're looking to get a diode laser, you're probably going to be spending somewhere in the area of $400 to $1,400. Man, the prices have just skyrocketed on the diode lasers. Since the beginning of COVID, a lot of people have been taking on home hobbies. Lasering being one of the most popular. And diode laser lasering being the most popular. And the prices have just skyrocketed. It's to the point now where a couple of years ago, three years ago, four years ago, four years ago, when I bought my first diode laser, uh, and at that time I did have a K40. Uh, I actually started in this about 10 years ago with a big monster of a uh, auction industrial uh, CO2 laser that I had in my shed for a while. And I started with that. And then I moved to the K40 and I, got, I sold that. Moved to the K40 because it was small and compact. I had that for a couple of years. And it, it was just fine. It worked fine. Did everything I wanted it to do. And it was really just a personal hobby back then. And then about three years ago, I guess it was, three or four years ago, I'm going to say four years ago, I bought my first diode laser. It was an Artur. Uh, it was not a Laser Master. It was the Shenzhen, whatever it is. The, the actual name of the company was the name of the laser. It was like a pre-model before they came out with the Laser Master 1. And then I bought the Laser Master 1. And back then it was $159 for the first one that I bought. And then I think $179 for the second one. And the prices sort of leveled off for, for a good long while. And it got up to like $199. And then COVID hit in 2019. And by, I would say that by June or July, the prices had skyrocketed up to about 275 or maybe even more. And now you can't really touch anything for the cheapest ones now are $300. And really you're looking at probably, you know, four to $500. Well, guess what? <laughs> this CO2, now it's a CO2. It's a world of difference between a, a diode laser. This CO2 is only $399 plus a few extra dollars in modifications that you're going to want to do 
you're going to come in cheaper than a diode laser. The question is, can you work with an 8-inch by 12-inch bed? And I can tell you that uh, I have done six slate tiles on the 8 by 12. And I just, I had a frame in the corner and I just butted them all up against each other, made my design, got it lined up directly where I needed it, and I made six of them in one shot on, on the K40. So how many can you do on a, you know, 400 by 400? Nine? <laughs> can only do three more. It's not that big of a difference. The only difference is when you want to go a little bit larger, like if you want to make a 12 inch clock or something like that. But the majority of the time, the 8x12 is, is going to fit into the plan for hobbies anyway. You're going to be making keychains and you're going to be making slate tiles and, you know, all types of different things. And the beauty of this is that you can work with all acrylics. And acrylic is probably the most fun in lasering that there is, working with acrylic. You can cut clear acrylic. You can do it in one pass cut clear acrylic you can cut any color that you want and with the smoothie board that I'm going to install I can use light burn and I can do my kerf offset and I can actually inlay the acrylic and which is really fun to do so th th it, this opens up a whole new world of opportunity the K40 to people and now they've become so popular that the quality has skyrocketed on these now, years ago, when I got my first one, I couldn't even turn it on. The ground was just barely connected. The, the, the cable was loose, just barely connected to the uh, frame of the machine. And the frame was painted, so it wasn't even a ground. Uh, I don't understand. They drilled the hole. They drilled out all the holes, painted it all, put a, put a bolt through it, put the ground on it, and hand tightened it that's not a ground you're not going to get any ground i had to take that off and sand it i had to do so many different things all the wiring was loose nothing was uh in place you know the quality has been so low on the k40s since they came out that they've gotten a bad reputation well i can tell you that since about 2020 for about the past two years the quality has bumped up on the k40s and you can get them just about anywhere uh ohm tech makes them uh, you know, any company, it, it, they're all pretty decent quality nowadays because they have to keep up. And a lot of them are selling on Amazon. And to sell on Amazon, you have to have decent quality control because you'll get blasted by the, re by the reviews. And Monport is on Amazon. They just started on Amazon. So I'm taking on this, this new venture with them. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate their CO2 and their fiber lasers. Uh, which are going to be on loan to me here at the shop and have what they call an open room. And I've always had an open room here. <laughs> Anybody can come visit anytime they want. If you're in Louisiana, come stop by. We'll, you know, have a cup of coffee or an adult beverage and uh, I'll, I'll show you what I got going on over here. It's always a mess, but you're welcome to come. And this open room concept has been around for a while in Asia. It started in Japan because of their lack of space and what they do is they demonstrate products in people's homes and typically they'll give the product to a person and they'll tell them you have to demonstrate it for represent the company for three to six months something like that and that's how this all started was in asia uh, years ago and it sort of made its way through asia and now it's making its way across the united states uh, there are a lot of companies now especially uh lasering companies that have these open rooms around the country where you can go get a demonstration, see the quality, look at the internals, uh, understand how it works, see, you know, uh, learn everything that there is to learn about it by somebody who's an actual user. So that that's what I'm doing here with them. So anyway, basically what, what I'm doing is introducing you to what's going to be happening here new at the shop. I'm going to have a new playlist, actually two new playlists or actually three, excuse me, three new playlists. And we're going to be talking, we're going to have one playlist for diode lasers. Uh, the rest, most of my training is going to be light burn training, as it always has been. But I'm going to have one list for uh, the 40 watt K40s. 
can have one list for other CO2s, in other words, my, my 50 watt and above. And I'm going to have a third list for the fiber laser as soon as that arrives, which that one cannot use light burn. Uh, that one I'm probably going to use EasyCAD 2 on. But all of this is lasering and it's all related to the channels. I'm not going off topic here. <laughs> We're going to continue to laser together. We're going to continue to learn everything that we can. You're going to learn from my mistakes. And I'm basically just trying to share with you everything I do in my hobby here. And maybe there'll even be some woodworking in the wood shop next door. I don't know. Uh, tell me what you think about that. I know a lot of people have written to me and asked, you know, I, I used to have a website called The Senior Woodworker. And a bunch of those people have come over and started watching these vi videos and gotten involved in lasering. So uh, I know some of you out there want to see some woodworking. Maybe we'll throw a few of those in. If you don't want to watch it, you don't have to watch it. No big deal. I'm still going to put out a video every week on lasering. It's probably going to be dual videos. So what I mean by that is part one will be a diode laser. Part two will be the CO2. I think that'll work out really good. Tell me what you think in the comments down below. So I just wanted to give you an overview of the new laser in the shop, the K40. It's here. I got it together. I didn't have to do any modifications right off the bat. It worked straight out of the box. You saw the first test burn, test cut. Tell me what you think. You think it's time to move up to a K40? How about having a diode and a CO2? Working both of them. You know, I can run both of them off the same computer at the same time just by uh, installing a VCP, a virtual COM port. And then Lightburn will use my COM5 and the CO2 will use my virtual COM port 7. So it, that can be done as well. So tell me what you think. I hope you enjoyed the video today and there's always lots more to come. So as always, I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.